Well, if you were watching the show last week, you may notice I wasn't here on Thursday or Friday. Simple explanation for that. I got sick. I started feeling pretty bad on Monday, but decided to ignore it since when you ignore things, they go away. It's always worked for me, but not this time. It turns out appendicitis does not work like that. By Thursday afternoon, I was in the emergency room at the NYU hospital in New York City. I might still be there, actually, if it weren't for a nurse called Kathy McBride. She saw me across the room looking confused and took complete control, got me into the treatment pipeline, made sure I was okay. I will always be grateful to her for that and to the other nurses at NYU who together might be the kindest group of people I've ever met in my life. Wonderful. Every one of them. No kidding. I also want to thank the surgeon who fixed me, Leon Pachter, stone cold genius with steady hands and a very nice guy. And above all, the person who was my advocate from the beginning and made sure everything went right, our friend and colleague, Dr. Mark Siegel, who's practiced at NYU for decades, by the way, and he joins us now in the friend zone to receive heartfelt thanks from me. So here's what I learned, doctor. If you, I'd never been in surgery before. I'd never really been to a hospital before except to visit briefly. If you know a doctor and trust him and will follow his instructions, as I know and trust you, it makes all the difference, especially if he's smart. <laughs> I know what he's doing as you do. I mean, it really makes a difference. Well, I Tucker, think. networking really helps, and knowing the right people helps. But the thing in your situation was, you know, you, you had an appendix that was in trouble. It was close to bursting. It was in a bad location, and you needed an artist. I call it the art of medicine, and you mentioned Dr. Leon Pachter. There's nobody more skilled than him. So getting him in there was an insurance policy that we needed. Now, we talk about insurance all the time here, but I'm always thinking it's a headless horseman. It's a plane without a pilot. The pilot is the actual doctor. And people out there need to know if we make an insurance decision with these laws that end up putting doctoring in jeopardy, we're going to jeopardize the art of medicine. In your case, I, I mean, I don't know what would have gone wrong with a more junior surgeon, but with the senior surgeon who's done this more than anyone, look at you. I'm, I'm making a satellite house call right now, and you look terrific. Your color is great. You look really healthy. I feel great. You I know, feel great. I, mean, I didn't. We, we did a week-long segment on opioid addiction. And I was just so paranoid about the painkillers. I just went on Advil, and I feel absolutely great. And I'm thankful to you and to the surgeon who did this for that reason. But I was struck by the complexity of the whole experience. Again, I'd never experienced anything like that before. It's really complicated. I had no idea what any of it meant. And having someone to explain it really made a big difference. Does, does that happen? If, let's say you don't know a doctor when you go in. Does anyone explain it to you? Well, that's a problem that doctors have because we learn in Latin. And I think it's very important for doctors to learn exactly how to communicate. A lot of times I hear from my patients, I don't understand that. Doctors have to be patient and to repeat it and to think about what language they're using. Because if you're not explaining to the patient what's going on, that's a big part of the problem. And I, you know, I also feel, by the way, this week, it was so refreshing to see the way the Steve Scalise case was handled on television. Because there again, you know, here on Fox, I, I felt that patients out there across America were learning what a great doctor does. In this case, Dr. Sava yeah. got out there on a press conference and explained, look, a bullet into the pelvis, there's a lot of blood flow there. There's organs that can be damaged. A lot of patients don't make it in this case. There's a lot of bleeding that go to, go, goes on. And he explained it so clearly that people understood what amount of heroism was involved in saving this man's life and how you can't be sure that any doctor can do it. So we need to look into a future of doctors who can still do it. And we need to make our doctors feel good so that they're going to be out there to help. And, and that was certainly true in your case, and it was certainly true in House Whip Scalise's case. And thank God he's doing well. I've never been more pro-doctor and pro-nurse than I am now. Whatever it takes. Dr. Siegel, God bless you, seriously, for all the good work you do and for the help you gave me. I really appreciate it. And the nurses, sure. I'm glad you pointed that out. They're hugely important. Yeah. Thanks, Tucker. You look great. Keep, keep on. Thank you. See you, doctor.